All right, welcome back, guys. Uh, we're here doing dynamics. We're talking about impulse and momentum, and this time we're doing uh, what I'm calling a graphical example. On this problem, we uh, have a block that is subjected to uh, P, and P is represented here. So for the first eight seconds, P is increasing from zero to 100. For the next six, eight seconds, P is decreasing from zero to 16. Um, and not to be confused with a uh, time-dependent uh, p, this is a this represents uh, a solution to this integral. Right. Uh, so in this example, get a better pen here. Uh, in this example, uh, we're given that uh, v, the initial velocity is zero. Our coefficient coefficient of static friction is 0.5, kinetic friction 0.4. We're asked to find when the block starts moving, what the max V is, and when the block stops moving. So let's get to it. Uh, we have a coordinate axis defined, our positive x direction. So we do a free body diagram. Uh, let's see, this is uh, P. Uh, this will be our frictional force, but let's go ahead and put the normal force in there. This is W, and our frictional force, I like to put it down close to the floor. So if we do a sum of the forces in the x direction, then that is going to give us P minus F, right? And we have a couple of different uh, coefficients of friction. So F is, um, has a couple of definitions. Let's Take a look at that. So uh, prior, I guess we could say prior to moving, prior to motion, uh, F, or maybe call this F naught, uh, is equal to mu s times uh, normal, right? Friction is fun. Uh, but normal force is the weight. So we use the weight. And that is 0 0.5 times 125, which gives us 62.5 pounds. And uh, note that we can't move until P is greater than F, right? So at some point along this uh, trajectory, then P will uh, go above 62.5 and things will start moving. So let's figure out where that is. Well, uh, P is uh, increasing, well, let's see, P minus F. So at motion, we would say that P uh, minus F naught uh, zero, right? So uh, they're the same. And this necessarily means that P is equal to 62.5. Okay, well, what is P? P is uh, rising, so it's uh, M is the slope, so what's that? 100 over, I guess it's 100 over 8, right? Uh, times T, so 100 over 8 T equals 62.5. And when we solve this for T, then we get T is equal to 62.5 divided by 12.5, uh, or five seconds. Okay, so uh, let's see, let's put this right here. We'll say five seconds. Let's put, a, put this in a box. Okay, uh, so we have that, and uh, so while moving, we need the F. Okay, then F is equal to mu K times the normal force, which is the weight. And that's going to be 0 0.4 times 125 pounds or 50 pounds. Okay, well, uh, what that means 
is that uh, if we go back to our, our graph here, let's see, let's put in a marker here. We'll say this is 50. Okay, and a little bit up from that, 62.5. We start moving at 62.5 right here, and we are moving for 50. There we go. Okay, so this part of this pyramid uh, represents the part of P that accelerates the block, right? If it's less than 50, then it's not overcoming the frictional force and the block is decelerating. So uh, then we could say um, just by inspection that everything from uh, here to the left is not contributing to motion at all. Then from here to here, uh, the darkened part of the pyramid is accelerating the block. And then from the end of that to the end, then this is just keeping it from slowing down. So uh, for the second part, they want the max V. Well, if this is accelerating throughout this darkened part, then it makes sense that V max is gonna be right there. Right? So um, then what we can do is we can uh, go back to our impulse equation, say mv1 plus our impulse. And here I'm just going to say, uh, let's see this, let's go p minus f dt. Uh, and then that's going to equal mv2, right? And again, uh, v1 is uh, zero. So uh, here, this, uh, we need to calculate uh, our darkened part of the triangle. So what do we got? We have uh, three areas here. We have the part of the triangle on the left above this little lip. Then we got the rectangle over there. Then we got the triangle on the right. And that is what this is. Okay, so what is that? That's one half of, let's see, 100 minus 62. Five, and uh, it's half of that because it's a triangle, and that is from five to eight seconds, so that is three. Okay, then it's plus 60 minus, or 62 and a half minus 50 is 12 and a half. 4.5 times 3 plus, and then this is 50, so it's half of that. So one half of 50, 4 equals mv2. Okay, and uh, m is the weight over gravity. We'll do that in just a second. So when we add these up, and this a little bit ago, and got, this is 193.75, and that is equal to mv. So we can divide this by uh, m. What is that? That is 125 divided by gravity, which is 32.2, and that is uh, v2. And uh, when you run that through the calculator, that gives you that uh, v2 is 49. 0.91, and that is in feet per second. Okay. All right. So now we're asked when the block stops moving, and uh, this one. Let's see. I'm uh, write this down. I'm going to erase uh, a bit of this. I'm going to erase yeah up to here. All right. Okay. So. Uh, back to this, um, just from a high level point of view, what's happening here is that we have uh, P, which represents the entire amount of force, and we have the frictional force, which 
uh, is active during the um, uh, not colored portions. And when those two equal each other, there's no more energy and the system comes to a halt. So what we can do is sort of, sort of shortcut the system and we can say that this is solved when P minus F uh, dt is equal to zero, right? So what is P? Uh, P, and I guess mathematically rigorous here, is the whole thing. So what is that? That is one half of 100 times 16. 100, 16, so that's what, 800? Okay, and what are the units? That's pounds times seconds. Okay, and F, well, we have two parts of F, right? We have um, the part that where nothing is moving, and then we have the part that goes out until it stops, right? So uh, let's see, F, say F dt here, and that's gonna be equal to uh, this first triangle. So one half of 6250 uh, times five seconds, right? Because that's how long it took to get things started. Uh, then plus, then from here to the end, and we don't know how long the end is, so uh, it's going to be the distance from five to say, I don't know, it's going to be past this, I, I'd imagine. So let's say T um, and right, T E, so plus 50 times. E minus five, right? And so, so if we can solve this uh, 6250, punch buttons in my calculator real quick. And five. So this is one. 56.25, and then you know what, plus 50 TE minus 250. And our equation is what, 800 minus 156.25, and then minus 50. T E plus two fifty equals zero and T E. So we'll add this to the other side, divide fifty. So what is that? Eight hundred minus one fifty six point two five plus two fifty. All that divided by fifty, and that gives us. 17.875 seconds. There we go. So uh, max B, we got that, that was 49. So B max, bringing that back, that was 49.91 feet per second. And uh, things, it, it stops at 17.875 seconds. So that is how you do a, a graphical impulse problem. Uh, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.